Hi, I'm Bob Nystrom, a software engineer on the Dart programming language. We recently shipped Dart 2.12 inside Flutter 2. I'm going to talk about the most important language feature in that release, sound null safety. I'll go into some of the deeper reasoning behind how and why we added null safety to Dart. But first, what is null safety? If you've been programming any amount of time, you've probably had a program crash because you tried to call a method on a variable that you didn't realize was null. So null safety enables the compiler to help you find and fix those bugs before you run your code. Now, the goal of null safety is not eliminating null. The absence of data is like part of life, right? Some people don't have middle names, some treasure chests don't contain any loot. Null is a great way to model data that you don't have, right? Developers are already familiar with the concept. It's got a nice short literal form, and it's a first class value you can pass around. So null isn't the problem. It's calling methods on null that leads to pain. So what null safety does is partition your variables into nullable and non-nullable ones. By default, variables are non-nullable. You get a compile error if you forget to initialize one or try to assign null to it. For example, here, the compiler won't let us pass null to is only white space, which requires a non-nullable string. But when you want to allow data to be absent, you can make a variable nullable by adding a question mark after the type, like the parameter here. This lets you pass in null, but in return, you can't call any methods on the variable. That's why we get a compile error on the call to trim. You have to get the value into a non-nullable location before you can use it. So I think of null as sort of like a toddler. Toddlers can do surprisingly many useful things, but if you let one run around your house without supervision, they will destroy something. So null safety in Dart helps you track where your null toddler is trying to escape to. Now, before I get into why we added null safety, I want to put it in context. Programming is hard. When we translate our intentions into code, we don't always get it right. This is where the, the classic iteration cycle comes in. You have something you want the computer to do. Maybe it's a new app or just a tweak to an existing one. You tap away on your keyboard for a bit and some code comes out. The compiler does its magic on the code and eventually gives you some kind of executable in return. You run the program and click around to get it into the state where you can test your change. Then you try out your change and see if it does what you want. Click some buttons, see if the right linky lights turn on. Did it work? On a good day, yes. Otherwise, you go back to your editor, make some more changes, and start the whole process over again. This is basically our lives as developers. I mean, presumably we take breaks and get outside, but our productivity is dependent on how fast we can crank through that cycle. So one of the best features of Flutter is Hot Reload, and this is why it's so valuable. Hot Reload only recompiles the part of your program that changed, so that build step is in the tens of milliseconds. Stateful hot reload preserves your app state so you don't need to restart the app and get it back to the point where you can see your change. But when I'm programming, I want feedback even faster. Let's say I'm trying to write some code to get the Unicode code point of the first character in a string. Now, this code doesn't do what I intend. In a dynamically typed language, I might have to run my program and get an exception before I realize the mistake. But in Dart, the type checker immediately tells me there's something fishy here. The index operator on string returns the character as a string, not a numeric code point. And since the type checker is always running in the background, I get that feedback instantly in my IDE. I don't have to run a compiler or load the program. This is about as fast of an iteration cycle as you can get, and this instant feedback is why I love static types. I think of the type checker as like the hottest reload. Okay, so the type checker is great, and using it to catch bugs is awesome. Can we just catch all the bugs with the type checker? In practice, uh, no. Like everything in life, there are trade-offs. You can certainly make your language worse by way of the type system. In the original Pascal, an array's length is part of its type. That sounds nice, because you get some compile time balance checking. Uh, but strings are character arrays in Pascal, and that means if you wanted to write a string manipulation function, you had to decide which string size it worked with. If your app had a string of some other size, you couldn't call the function. It's basically impossible to write reusable string code. This is why we program in C now instead of Pascal. And, I mean, deal with constant security vulnerabilities from string overflows, so I mean, maybe Pascal had it right after all. But it's also dead, which is telling us something. When you add a runtime feature to a programming language, you increase the set of things users can do. If you add, say, threads, now users can do concurrency. Type system features don't work that way. The user experience for the type system is mostly compile errors, which prevent you from running your program. Making the type system more precise adds new things users can't do. Now, these additional constraints are valuable when the things that prevents you from doing are not what you want. Good compile errors stop you from accidentally shipping bugs. The type system is sort of like guardrails. Guardrails are great when you're standing on a cliff, but you don't want them, you know, cutting across your front yard when you're just trying to get your mail. 
So before we could add null safety to the type system, we had to work through whether it would be more of a help to users than a hindrance. So here's what that analysis looks like. The first question is, does this static analysis provide real user benefit? Leif Peterson's the main designer of null safety, and he often says we can make the type system dance to whatever tune we want. We could probably make the type system track which numbers are even or odd, but that wouldn't help you make good apps, right? So null checking, though, is pretty compelling. We know that null reference exceptions are a common cause of crashes in shipped applications. We know developers waste a lot of time tracking down these bugs. The easiest way to know that this is valuable is that users keep telling us. Null safety has been the number one user request <laughs> literally since the day Dart was announced. We know it has value, but does the value outweigh the cost? By cost here, I mean effort to learn the feature and effort to use it while programming. Users would probably like it if the type system could prevent division by zero errors, right? But doing so requires surprisingly complex type system stuff. You're talking full dependent types. With each function that touches numbers, you have to write a little arithmetic proof to appease the type checker. That's a lot of effort for a runtime error that's fairly rare in practice. The cost would outweigh the benefit. Fortunately, null safety is in a much better spot. Several other languages have similar features, so many developers have already spent the time loading it into their heads, and we get that knowledge for free when they come to Dart. And the type system complexity for nullable types is actually pretty straightforward. They're built on a formalism called union types that's been understood for years. Um, supporting union types in their full generality, along with intersection types, uh, does get pretty intricate, but the limited subset that we need for nullable types is simple and pretty intuitive. When you're programming, you basically just need to decide which variables you want to permit null. You sprinkle a couple of question marks and, and you're good. So it's not too complex to learn or too much work to use. So we're looking pretty good, but there's one last challenge when it comes to type systems. Static analysis is conservative. It looks at every single way your code could execute, every control flow path that could be taken, every value a variable might have, and if any of those have a problem, you get a fatal compile error. It does an extremely pessimistic analysis. Now, that's great for ensuring bad code doesn't sneak through, but it comes at a cost of being uncharitable towards good code. There are many totally safe programs that at runtime will never go wrong, but the type system isn't smart enough to figure that out. Here's an example of what I mean. So in this code here, when the argument list isn't empty, we initialize a border variable with a string. Then later, again, if the argument list isn't empty, we use that variable. Now, we know the argument list doesn't change and will only ever use border when it's been initialized. But the compiler has no way of knowing that those two calls to is not empty always return the same value. So the fundamental trade-off with static analysis is that it blocks bugs, but it also blocks some number of dynamically correct programs like this one. And that frustrates users. They know their program is right, but they can't convince the type checker. Now, you can reduce this irritation by making the type system more expressive so that programmers can more precisely explain to the type checker what their code is doing, but my experience is that every incremental bit of expressiveness you add to a type system adds a lot of complexity. You start off with relatively simple stuff like subtyping, that lets you write a lot of programs, but you lose too much static safety when working with collections, so you add generic types. You want to support higher order methods on those collections like map and where, so you add generic methods, and then some user asks why you can't pass a list of string to a function that takes a list of object. And fixing that gets real hard real fast. You need something like wildcards in Java, variance annotations in C-sharp and Scala, or type projections in Kotlin. Even if your language does support one or more of those, you still have to teach users how to use them. You find yourself on Stack Overflow explaining how a parameter inside a callback is actually in a covariant position because a contravariant position inside a contravariant position flips back to being covariant, and sometimes you wonder if static types are worth it at all. So what about null safety? How gnarly does it get? Can we design a fairly simple type system that correctly allows most dynamically safe code? Now, this is honestly an open question for me when we first started working on the feature. I wasn't sure whether null safety would actually be usable. Fortunately, we had a really helpful feature to build on. Dart has long had a feature called type promotion. If you do a, a type test on a variable, an is expression, inside an if condition, then inside the body of the if statement, Dart promotes the variable to have that more specific type. That way you can call methods defined on the subclass, even though the variable's declared type is a superclass. What's going on here is something called control flow analysis. 
The type system looks at all the ways that execution can flow through the program. If a piece of code can only be reached by passing through some successful type test, then it can prove that the value in the variable must have that type. Kotlin has something similar called SmartCast, and like they do, we extended Dart's type promotion system to also look at null checks. When you look to see if a variable is not null, then Dart promotes the variable to a non-nullable type, which then lets you call methods on it. Crucially, this is what dynamically correct Dart code already looks like. In other words, unlike you know, dependent types or variants, you don't have to write separate type annotation junk to prove that your code is using a nullable variable correctly. The control flow and null checks you already have are that proof. And with this, we found that about 90% of existing Dart code is already perfectly null safe when opted into the new type system. This even means code that is using null, which makes sense when you think about it. Most of that code was dynamically correct. It's not like we write tons of code that you know, crashes on null reference errors and we just commit it and leave it around, right? We fix the code by checking for null using control flow. So control flow analysis enables the type system to just understand those dynamic checks. Of course, 90% isn't 100%, and there are some places where the static analysis can't see that your code is safe. In particular, fields and top-level variables don't play nice with control flow analysis. So in addition to the type system changes, we added a handful of other features to sort of ease working with null. First, there's a little non-null assertion bang operator for places where you just want to forcibly tell the type checker you know something won't be null. It's, um, it's like an explicit downcast using as. My favorite is the late modifier. This defers uninitialized variable checks until runtime. For example, here we don't initialize the color field when the home icon state is first constructed. Now, we know that this code is safe because Flutter calls init state before it calls build, so color will be initialized before it's used, but the type system doesn't know that and would normally give us an uninitialized field error. Using late on that field silences that error. It's similar to late init in Kotlin. But late fields in Dart can also have initializers, which get run lazily, like the lazy modifier in Swift. So it's, it's one little keyword, but it covers a bunch of patterns. There are a couple of other tweaks to the language, like required named parameters. And it's this entire suite of features that work together to make null both safe and pleasant to work with. There is another trick you can use if your type system's getting in the way of code that you know works. You can poke holes in it. Many type systems are deliberately unsound. An expression with some static type produces a value of another type at runtime and the program just keeps going. For example, uh, TypeScript is intentionally unsound around function types. That makes it easier to take all the world's dynamically typed JavaScript and get it migrated into TypeScript. Kotlin is also unsound with respect to null because null can flow in through Java interop. Now, with Dart, we ship our own compiler and runtime and core libraries. We also have a lot of analysis infrastructure we can use to build automated migration tools. We've got the whole stack. That gave us the ability to not just add null safety to Dart, but to design a sound set of type rules. That means that an expression whose type is non-nullable can never produce null. That level of safety is nice for your peace of mind. Uh, but it's more than just that. When you have a static proof of some property of the user's program, that gives the compiler a lever that it can use for optimization. Before null safety, our compiler had to emit null checks before each method call, just like compilers for other languages with nullable references do. Those checks make your executable larger and slower. With sound null safety, the compiler can discard all those checks when the expression static type is non-nullable because it knows null can never reach that point. Also, in some cases, we can store variables directly in registers or on the stack instead of having to heap allocate them. You get a, a faster app that uses less memory. Often, the way to make developers more productive is to give them higher level language features, you know, stuff like garbage collection or higher order functions for transforming collections. But programming at a high level usually comes at the cost of slower runtime performance. Now, with sound null safety in Dart, we believe the language is more productive but your app also gets smaller and faster. That's a really rare win in language design. Now, that's a good sales pitch for your boss, but what I really care about is what it feels like. I find working in a big code base to be overwhelming. It's a, a struggle to simultaneously hold in my head all the various states the program can be in and you know figure out which ones might let a null sneak through. I've migrated a lot of code to null safety in the past few months, and it's it's such a relief to unload that null tracking out of my head. 
Instead, I actually see where null can go right in the text of the program. That leaves me with a little more brain power to focus on what I'm trying to do. And I really hope it gives you that same feeling too. Now, if this talk hasn't satisfied your curiosity, we have a lot more docs on null safety you can check out at the links here. And also there are a lot more Flutter talks at IO this year. So thank you for watching.